Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation with complex numbers. We have 1 plus i times root 3 to the power x equals 64 and we're going to be finding the x values that satisfies this equation. So to be able to do that, you can kind of use trial and error because 1 plus i root 3 is a nice complex number that can be written in polar form and that's what we're going to do first. And then you can go from there. Or you can just use the longer approach, just write everything in polar form, distribute the x, use natural logs, and so on and so forth. All right, let's see how this goes. So first of all, I would like to write this number in polar form. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and draw my complex plane with the real and imaginary axes. And then I'm going to go ahead and mark my number. So the number is going to be 1, this is going to be my x coordinate, and this is going to be my y coordinate, so it's going to be like 1 comma root 3. That is going to be the coordinates of my point. So root 3 is greater than 1, it's about 1.7, so if we take this to be 1 unit, it's probably going to be something like this, and then this is going to be root 3i, and this is going to be 1, and then when I plot that point, that's going to represent my number, 1 plus i root 3, okay? And obviously, the distance between this number and the origin is important because that's going to give us the modulus, which is r, and r in this case from Pythagorean theorem is just going to be 2. So there are two things important if you're writing a complex number in polar form or in exponential form. One of them is r, which is the distance from 0, easily calculated with the Pythagorean theorem. And the second one is the angle, the argument. And that is given as theta, but in this case, notice that we do have a 30-60-90 triangle because of the length. So this is going to be 60 degrees or pi over 3 radians. Okay? That's my angle, that's my r. And in general, a complex number can be written as r times e to the power i theta, where theta is the angle, the argument. So we have everything we need. Let's go ahead and write this down. 1 plus i root 3 can be written as 2 times, which is the modulus, multiplied by e to the power i times pi over 3, which represents 60 degrees. Now, we do want to raise this number to the power x, so let's go ahead and do that. 2 times e to the power i times pi over 3. We're going to raise it to the power x. And we do want this number to equal an integer, 64. How is that possible? Well, you can also write x as, I mean, not x, you can also write 64 as a complex number and then see what power you have to raise it to to get 64. And in this case, let me tell you something, the answer is going to be an integer. Well, at least one of the solutions. So maybe at least at this point you already know what it is, you guessed it and checked it, I'm pretty sure some of you, maybe most of you did, uh, but let's proceed with the solution. So tip, to be able to solve this, problem, like I said earlier, we, did, we do need to write 64 in polar form. Well, 64 is just an integer, so how do you represent it on the coordinates plane, right? Well, it's just going to have a real part, no imaginary part. In other words, imaginary part of this number is going to be 0, which means that this is a real number. It's also a complex number, but it's a real complex number, okay, however you want to say. So it's going to be 64 units away from the origin, like this. Obviously, it's not drawn to scale if you compare it to the other one, but basically that's what it's going to look like. And the angle, the argument, is also important, right, in addition to the modulus. Uh, it doesn't make any angle, it's, it actually coincides with the x-axis, which means our angle in this case, the theta, is going to be 0 radians or 0 degrees, but you can also write it as 2 pi radians or 4 pi radians or 6 pi radians. You get the idea? In other words, you can write it as a multiple of 2 pi, an integer multiple of 2 pi. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's multiply the 64 by, this is the modulus, times 1, which is e to the power 2n pi i. You could also write the i first. It's usually uh, i theta, but I just like to write the i at the end because 2 is a coefficient, so on and so forth. Anyways, doesn't matter. All of these are constants, by the way, except n is an integer, uh, which is kind of like a variable, but we know it's an integer. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and solve the problem given this equation. Now, once you put it in this form, 
The rest is fairly easy because all you have to do is natural log both sides and solve for x. But the interesting part is going to come up in a little bit. So let's go ahead and natural log both sides. And obviously when you natural log something like this, and I should probably distribute the x first. Let me go ahead and write it for this way first. 2 to the x and then e to the power i x times pi over 3. You can pretty much put the x anywhere equals 64 times this, and then I'm going to natural log both sides. So let's go ahead and ln this side and that side. So to be able to ln this side, I'm going to move it a little bit. I'm going to move it away. And then put the ln on both sides. If two things are equal, their lns are also equal because it's a one-to-one -one function, or I guess it comes from the well-definedness of functions because if a is equal to b, then f of a is always equal to f of b if f is a function, right? Great. So, and the converse, is that the converse? Whatever. If you look at it backwards, that's going to be the definition for one-to-oneness. So, what do you do here? We have a product, so we're going to ln each term. So, we're going write, to write it like this. So, we're going to separate it into a sum of two ln's. But ln e is 1, so when you move these powers to the front by using the exponent rule, right, or power rule, whatever, then you're going to get the following. x ln 2 plus i times x times pi over 3 times ln e, which is 1, ln 64. Now, you may write ln 64 as ln 2 to the 6th power because we do have an ln 2 here, so it would make sense, and that would give us 6 ln 2. And here we're going to get 2n pi Awesome. So what do we do here, right? We distributed the x over this, right? And then we logged both sides, obviously. Now one thing we can do is we can take out the x. Okay, let's do it first. ln2 plus i times pi over 3 equals 6 ln2 plus 2n pi i. By the way, n is an integer. I think I keep saying it. And then divide both sides by this ln2 thing, and you're going to get the answer. Easy, right? Once you put it in polar form, then you'll get the answer. But one thing to keep in mind here is particular values like the principal branch, right? So there are multiple solutions because this is multi-valued. So you can basically replace n with certain values like n could be 0, n could be 1. In this case, n equals 1 is an interesting one. So let's go ahead and look at that first. If n is equal to 1, then we get x equals 6 ln 2 plus 2 pi i divided by ln 2 plus i times pi over 3. I don't like that fraction at the bottom, so let's go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by 3 to get rid of the fraction. That's going to give me 18 ln 2 plus 6 pi i divided by 3 ln 2 plus i pi. Well, what do you notice here? Well, you can take out a common factor in the numerator, which is a 6. If you take out a 6, you're going to get 3 ln 2 plus pi i, and then this is going to be 3 ln 2 plus i pi, which you can also write as pi i. Okay, same thing, right? Great. Now, we can cancel this out. We can simplify these two expressions, and we end up with x equals 6. I told you that one of the solutions is going to be an integer, and this is actually the integer solution. The only integer solution that satisfies this. this. Correct me if I'm wrong. But x equals 6 is going to work. Maybe there's more, um, possibly, right? But anyways, uh, so if you go ahead and do this, uh, I could probably write it in different ways. 1 plus i root 3 to the 6th power, you should be getting 64, okay? And of course, this is the general solution, needless to say, but for particular values, we get at least an integer solution. All right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.